It is late Sunday, July 28th, and we are monitoring the remnants of Tropical Storm Dorian. The latest outlook from the Hurricane Center is still giving this feature a 30% chance of regeneration into a tropical depression or tropical storm within the next 48 hours. Over the course of the afternoon, the Hurricane Hunters flew across what was left of Dorian to see if there was any sign of regeneration, and they mainly flew across the western semicircle of the convective mass that we see on satellite imagery because that would be the general area where we would expect the area of surface low pressure to be located, but they did not find any signs of a closed surface center. If anything, they did find some northwest winds, but certainly not enough evidence to say that Dorian was in fact a classified tropical cyclone once again. But we still have a well-defined mid-level vortex located well so towards the east, and this is going to be the main area of low pressure that we will still have to monitor over the next two to three days. Here is the latest visible satellite animation as of this evening, and you can see that there is really no sign of a closed surface center. The Hurricane Center was able to close off, or at least partially close off, a very broad area of low pressure well to the west of the mid-level circulation, but there are no signs of convection developing near that center, and it is likely to fall apart unless convection can inch a little closer to that area of low pressure. Meanwhile, to the east, you can so clearly see the mid-level vortex swirling about here, but the enhanced infrared animation is not very convincing. Earlier today, we saw much more in the way of convection near the mid-level circulation, but all of that convection and activity has since dissipated. Now, within the last 30 to 45 minutes, we have seen another recent blow-up of activity with thunderstorm development, but we're going to need to see much more of that over the next two days if the mid-level circulation is going to try to develop surface low pressure closer to the ocean, and then we're going to have to see if this water vapor imagery is going to show a more favorable look over the coming period, because we still have this upper level low north of Hispaniola. This is the main culprit behind the southwest vertical wind shear that is tearing apart the system. Remember, the main reason why the surface circulation is so far ahead of the mid-level vortex is because it's being decoupled by the southwest vertical wind shear in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. Now, I will say that this evening's regional water vapor look is a bit more promising than what it appeared to be about two days ago because the upper level low is starting to weaken. It is becoming a little bit more in the way of cloud filled, so that is a sign that the upper level low is falling apart, and it is also drifting very slowly towards the northwest. So if our remnant tropical storm Dorian can begin to see more in the way of upper level ridging directly over it, you can start to see more in the way of outflow, and if we start to get more outflow in the western semicircle, then that would be an indication that maybe conditions are becoming a little bit more favorable for regeneration. But as of right now, conditions still appear to be nothing more than marginal at best, but we're going to have to continue to monitor water vapor trends as we head on into the early part of this week. This is a look at the latest mid to upper level shear analysis, and you can see that we do have a bit of an upper level anti-cyclone trying to follow the remnants of Dorian, as outlined here just to the east of the Virgin Islands, but until this mid to upper level trough just to the east of the Bahamas and southeast of Bermuda starts to move more so towards the north, we're still going to be seeing the impacts of southwest vertical wind shear. Any regeneration that does occur would likely be very slow, especially over the next 48 hours, because the storm is not only being inhibited by moderate to strong southwest winds aloft, but it's also moving towards the west by the low level flow fairly quickly at just under 20 miles per hour as it continues to be guided by the very strong low-level flow underneath this subtropical Atlantic Ridge. And it's not going to be until the system approaches the southwest Bahamas that the low-level flow beneath that ridge begins to weaken as it rounds the western periphery of the ridging and starts to move into the trough that's located along the east coast. Over the next five days, several of the statistical intensity models do suggest strengthening as upper level wind shear begins to relax. However, I will say that it often appears that the statistical models have a bias towards strengthening tropical disturbances into cyclones too aggressively. So until some of the more dynamical global models begin to suggest regeneration, I wouldn't really buy into these solutions very much. We have also seen the models continue to trend more so towards the west into the southeast Gulf of Mexico by days 5 and 6, although I will say that South Florida is probably the best bet for the time being, with several of the dynamical models being displaced just to the east of the tracks that you see here. So Florida, along with the central Florida peninsula, appears to be the consensus at this time. The following is the 12Z run of the European ECMWF model run, and beginning at the initial hour, we can see the remnants of Dorian just to the northeast of the Virgin Islands. And as we go into days 2, 3, and 4, we really do not see much in the way of regeneration, but the model is clearly tracking the remnants of Dorian into the southwest Bahamas 
and eventually into South Florida along with the Florida Keys by day four and into day five it starts to fall apart as it begins to be impacted by a trough and then it slowly dissipates as it gets recurved just east of the Carolinas. We also have almost unanimous agreement with that idea. This is coming from the 12Z run of the American GFS model. We don't see any regeneration of Dorian, but it pushes on into South Florida before becoming recurred by the trough and moves up the east coast of Florida as we go into days five through seven. So the European and GFS are in very good agreement through the first seven days of the forecast. Also, as we take a more detailed look at the GFS, we can see the reason why the GFS probably isn't strengthening the storm before reaching Florida. You can see the very small anticyclone located above the remnants of Dorian at this time, northeast of the Virgin Islands, but we still have this powerhouse mid to upper level trough just to the north and towards the west. And over the next 48 to 72 hours, you really don't see much separation between the trough and the remnants of the storm. And the GFS is still maintaining the upper level low over the northern Bahamas as we go into the next 60 and 72 hours. It's not until day four that perhaps conditions could become a little bit more favorable out across the Bahamas, but by then it is possible that the remnants of Dorian could be a little bit more so towards the west of that area by then. So as of right now, the models just are not showing conditions becoming quite favorable enough for reintensification. But as always, we will have to monitor this in the tropics as things are subject to change. And finally, this was a look at the 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model. And it's always a red flag when the CMC doesn't show development because it's often way too bullish with tropical cyclone formation. But in this case, we are still not seeing the CMC developing Dorian back into a tropical cyclone. Instead, it pushes the remnants of the system into the central gulf as a tropical wave before falling apart completely. In summary, it looks as though Dorian will be nothing more than an enhanced rainfall maker for the very far east coast portion of the Florida Peninsula as it starts to interact with the trough, and then a lot of its remnants may eventually get pushed off the eastern seaboard, as is being advertised by the GFS precipitation forecast. But the moral of the story is that we will still have to monitor. If the upper level low does start to move out of the way a little bit quicker, then we could see a more favorable environment develop along the Bahamas. But right now, the odds are definitely stacked against it. But we're going to be here at 28storms.com continuing to monitor the situation for you, as we always do during the hurricane season. So stick with the Hurricane Center for official updates and 28storms.com for more detailed video analysis.